Welcome to another video of STAT212. So today we're going to talk a little bit about identifying uh, different types of data and just a little bit of, you know, why we, we care about those distinctions. Uh, so I'm going to get uh, the notes up here. Um, so one reason why um, it matters um, identifying different types of data is because um, the data that we collect is going to depend on the question that we might want to answer um, because different types of data give us different information. Um, so we're going to talk about three broad categories of data. Um, this choice, by the way, there's many ways that we could kind of categorize different types of data. I've seen some folks who do four different categories. I've seen some who just do two, um, but we're going to do three. Um, and the first type of data we're going to talk about is categorical data. So data that falls into um, two or more non-ordered categories. And so the non-ordered part is somewhat important because if we have ordered categories, we have a slightly different type of data that we need to talk about when we get to discrete data. So um, sometimes you hear this referred to as character data or nominal data. Um, those are just other terms that typically just mean the same thing. Um, so an example of categorical data would be, um, in what places have you experienced pain since your knee surgery? So that's going to elicit you know, responses like, like different parts of your body where you might have experienced pain. Um, those are not going to be, that's not going to be ordered categories, right? So it's not like level of agreement, you know, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. So that it's, it's non-ordered in that way. Um, and so there might be a lot of times where we want to um, gather kind of these non-ordered categorical responses um, for different questions. And there are things that we can do statistically with categorical data, even if it's not numeric data. Um, we do have some options for um, visualizing and analyzing categorical data. Um, one special, uh, special type of categorical data would be binary data, data that falls into two categories. So oftentimes, um, yes, no questions would be like binary data where the two responses we get are yes and no. Um, so this also kind of has some unique properties that we'll talk about um, later in the course, um, but it's kind of you know, nice to recognize when we have binary data versus categorical data with three or more categories. All right, so continuous data is another um, type of data, and this would be numeric measurable data. So as an example here, um, you know, measuring knee movement, um, you know, that's something that I would measure. It's not, I can't exactly, oh, I guess I could define categories to, you know, flexibility. Um, but if I'm measuring it like numerically, then that would be continuous data. So truly continuous data has no gaps or breaks in the, in the scale, meaning that I can measure as precisely as my instrument allows me to. Um, I'm measuring something that has no, like that has infinite precision theoretically. Um, that said, when we measure data, obviously we have to make choices about um, our instrumentation. And so, so because we have instrumentation, there's naturally going to be a level, like a limit of precision that we just deal with. But we, we do still like to kind of distinguish this as continuous data that is, um, you know, theoretically limitless um, precision if we have the instrumentation for it. Um, so, so for example, um, you know, age, is a continuous measurement, right? I can, I can measure the age of a person or of an object to as much precision as my instrumentation allows me to or my language allows me to. Um, however, we obviously make choices about age. Oftentimes, if we're talking about people, we, we talk about age in years. That would be like our kind of our level of precision that most people are okay with. Um, and I can still understand that as continuous data. However, um, if I were to record data more categorically, so, so for example, um, generations, right? Like if I'm kind of dividing people by age in terms of generations, then I might start trying to, treating it more categorically um, because, you know, that's not really a numeric measurement anymore. Like I, I've gone pretty far away from that. Um, so, so it is possible to take something like age and kind of, you know, treat it more categorically at a certain point. Um, but as long as I'm measuring it numerically and I'm not dividing, subdividing it too far, I can still call it continuous data. All right, and the third category is a little bit harder to nail down because it's kind of the in-between category, and that would be discrete data. 
Um, sometimes you might hear this called ordinal data, but it's um, typically going to be numeric data or data that I can kind of make numeric because it's ordered. Um, and I don't have an infinite level of precision possible for measuring it. Um, so, so a lot of times count data might be more discrete because I can't like measure a count. I count it. Um, there's, you know, I'm going to be limited to whole numbers because that's, that's the level of precision that's possible. Um, it's not instrumentation that's stopping me. It's the element itself just can't be more precise than a whole number if I'm, if I'm recording count data. So discrete data um, has these natural limitations in terms of how precise it can be. Um, so, so very often Likert scale data, um, I mentioned before, so like, you know, strongly agree, somewhat agree, neutral, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree. That would be like discrete data because um, I do have kind of these defined categories, but they're ordered. They're not um, non-ordered. They're not, you know, just any order matters. Like, no, they're, it's, it's a scale and I can convert it to a numeric scale, scale like one to five if I find that helpful. So, so I could call that discrete data for that reason. Um, so discrete data versus continuous like data, and this, this is where the, I think the, the distinction gets really messy, is because there's a lot of data that is technically discrete that we kind of treat more continuous like. Um, so for example, wealth. Um, wealth, at a, at a, you know, if we're really being nitpicky about that, wealth is really a discrete variable because um, wealth has a natural limit of precision. And it's not just instrumentation. It's like, you know, we measure wealth, um, you know, using money and money has to have um, a limit to precision. So, so I'd say arguably wealth is really a discrete variable, but we don't really think of it discreetly. We really think of it more continuous because the, the level of, of um, precision is just so small. So there's a lot of variables that kind of fall in that, that weird category where we, we just kind of call them continuous like. Um, so I like to just kind of mention that, that, you know, these, these different three categories that we use um, are not, you know, supposed to be super, super important to distinguish where, you know, we have, should be just walking around pointing out what type of data everything is and everything fits neatly into one of these three boxes. Rather, they're just kind of some guides that help us understand what type of data we're, we're working with and what kind of opportunities we have to visualize and analyze that type of data. Um, but to the extent that it's helpful, we do like to distinguish these in our class and look at a few examples of what we kind of put under each umbrella and why. So that said, here's um, a table here with, with um, the three different categories of data that we talked about and some, some more examples. So over here on the left with categorical data, um, what insurance provider do you have? That's categorical. It's non-ordered. Um, it's not something that I'm going to convert to a numeric scale. Uh, what forms of transportation do you, do you take to work? What is your zip code? That's kind of a tricky one because it's technically numeric data, but I really treat it categorically. I don't, I don't think of zip codes as, as ordered data. I think of it as just kind of a indicator of, of where people live, and I really treat it as non-ordered categories. Um, discrete data. How many days last week did you exercise? So, so notice this is a count variable. How many days? Um, so I'm going to have these discrete responses. I can't measure that. I'm going to have responses like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's a natural ordering to that data, um, where 0 is obviously less than 1 is less than 2. Um, are you a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior? This is a little bit more um, debatable. I think oftentimes we treat this more discrete because we do recognize an inherent ordering to these different categories. Um, I suppose I could collect it in a way and use it in a way that's more categorical. Um, but, but oftentimes we might, you know, recognize the ordering of this and treat it more discreetly. We could convert it to a numeric scale, you know, one to four, zero to three, if we want to. Um, on a scale of one to five, how happy are you with your current housing? Obviously that's discrete. It's numeric, it's ordered, um, and there's obviously a level of precision there. Um, some example of continuous data. So what's your height? That's a measurement. Um, you could always be more precise. How long have you lived at this residence? Again, that's a measurement that could be more precise. It's limited only by the instrumentation that I might choose to use and how I want to record that. What is your blood pressure? 
How much water have you drank today? So these are some relatively clear cut examples um, that you should kind of be familiar with. Like I said, there's gonna be some examples that are a little bit harder to sort, um, but don't worry too much about them. You know, we're not gonna test really tricky, confusing, you know, muddy examples. So, so just know kind of the more clear examples. Um, some just some uh, notes here, binary data, um, we typically don't think of that as discrete ever because there's only two categories. So, so sometimes with binary data, you might be wondering, well, what if there's like an ordering? Or like, what if I think about it as ordered? Um, but the because I only have two categories, it's not like ordering just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like I just, well, I just have two categories. So, so typically we just kind of call binary data categorical. Um, and then I already mentioned this, but just because data is numeric, doesn't necessarily mean it's discrete or continuous. So zip codes is a really good example where if I'm if I'm really treating it and understanding it more categorically, then I should treat it like I should call it categorical at that point. Um, so when does the type of data matter? So this is going to matter when we get into software uh, because when we're we're using something like R. Um, you know, sometimes we do have to decide what type of data, we want to decide how we want R to read the data and store the data. So as an example, um, there's a data set that I like to use called the plants data set, and it numbers three different species, one, two, and three. Um, so R is going to think that that's numeric. Um, rather, what I want to do is I want to actually treat that categorically because they're really just three different categories that don't have an inherent ordering. They're just, they're just three categories. Like I, call, I could call them A, B, or C. So if I were to enter that data into R, I would want to go ahead and specify that this is character data. It's just three non-ordered categories, even though it's presented as one, two, and three. So I should be kind of aware of those different things, um, especially when I have numeric data that I want to treat more categorically, or if I have um, categorical data that I might want to convert to a numeric scale before I enter it into R. Or if I have um, kind of this, um, you know, worded data, like maybe I have strongly disagree, um, somewhat disagree, neutral, maybe I want to treat that as discrete data, and R is going to assume that's character data if I just have words. So then I might want to specify it as factor, or I might want to convert my data to one to fives first, and then it will just be treated as numeric, which it doesn't really matter. I could, I could treat it as factor at that point. Um, so there, these are just little things we have to think about when we get to software later that it's good to kind of introduce now. All right. So that said, um, let's go ahead and sort some examples here. So the first question, identify the variable studied and its data type. Um, we have 20 runners run a mile as fast as they can. Their times are recorded. So their times here, this is going to be a continuous variable, right? Because continuous or times is something that I can measure, something that I could be as precise as my instrumentation allows me to be. So that would be a continuous variable. 50 students are asked what their major is. So majors um, are going to be categorical. Um, majors can't really be ordered. Um, so it wouldn't make sense to call them discrete or convert them to a numeric scale. So um, so categorical makes most sense. 100 married couples are asked how many children they have. So this one's a little bit tricky um, because discrete uh, data is always tricky, but this is discrete data because um, number of children can't be uh, measured. It can't be more precise than a whole number. So right, my responses are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, things like that. So there is an inherent ordering. I can record it numerically, but it's not something that I measure. It can't be more precise than a whole number. Um, 20 runners are asked to run a mile as fast as they can. Next to each runner's name, the coach records yes or no to indicate whether or not they broke the five minute mark. So here, the data being recorded is the yes or no. So even though involved in this is running time, um, the data that's actually collected and used is just the yes or no. So this is really a binary variable at that point, two categories only. And the last question, judges score musicians across a number of different criteria using four choices, 
superior, excellent, good, or needs work. This one's a little bit tricky because I think there's two that make sense. I think one might be slightly better, um, but categorical makes sense. But I think discrete is probably the better option because this is ordered data. These are ordered categories. So I would, I would think of this more discreetly because I could really think of this as like 0, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4. If there's that inherent ordering, um, it might be worthwhile to preserve that. And therefore, you know, if I were to enter this into R, um, I might choose to enter this as a factor variable so that I have that ordering preserved when I uh, make graphs or analyze this. But categorical is an understandable choice too. Um, and if, if there wasn't an inherent ordering, this would definitely be categorical data.